All right, take two. <laughs> I've recorded this already once, uh, and the microphone didn't uh, pick up any of my audio, so uh, we're going to do this again. Hey, everybody. My name is Gardner. It's very late in the evening for me to be recording one of these videos, but I'm too excited because uh, a bunch of stuff just dropped from uh, Linus Tech Tips and Tested and Games Radar and PC Gamer and Giant Bomb uh, about the Steam Deck. They got hands-on. They got an hour and a half. Uh, each outlet got an hour and a half to play around with the Steam Deck. Let's talk about this because this is so cool i am so pumped okay let's talk about this i have notes i have taken copious notes uh so i apologize if i just keep looking at my screen i'm gonna try and cut to b-roll as much as possible here and before we get to the actual meat and potatoes here um if you like this video if you find it useful if you want to see more like it hit that like button it really helps the show out you can also subscribe uh if you haven't already Let's talk about ergonomics because it's the first thing that everybody was talking about. Uh, everybody said that it feels like a premium device, that it's not as heavy as uh, they were led to believe. Uh, it has a good weight. It feels like it has a good size to weight ratio, according to Linus. Linus said he has small hands, which is good because he can reach all of the controls without any issue. That's a good thing. I have rather large hands, so uh, this shouldn't be an issue for me. And PC Gamer also said that seeing pictures didn't prepare him for how big the device actually was in person. Games Radar said it is big, but not uncomfortable to hold. It feels premium. It's not as heavy as she thought it would be. And it's heavier than the Switch, but nicely balanced. Giant Bomb said that it was lighter uh, than he was led to believe. It's comfortable. He likes the button layout. Uh, and Tested says for long play sessions, you might want to brace your elbows, whatever that means, brace your elbows on your knees. Uh, and it feels lighter than he had imagined. So consensus all around is that this device is not too heavy. Um, a lot of people were concerned about the, the weight of the device, uh, but it seems everybody mentioned that it is not particularly heavy, um, not egregiously more heavy than the Switch, for example. Let's talk about the controls, because what is a game console without its controls? Uh... Linus Tech Tips said that the buttons felt great. The D-pad had a great click, and that's something that uh, PC Gamer also mentioned. Analog triggers confirmed not dual stage triggers. That was also confirmed by Tested. Linus was talking about the haptics, and they didn't feel quite right, and a Valve employee jumped in and said, that's something we're going to tune. Gyro controls offer more fine control. Uh, that's an important uh, That's an important thing. Um, this is something that I think a lot of... Of, uh, of both console gamers and PC gamers who are n not on the, the gyro train don't really understand. And they think that motion control is all about the waggle, like the, you know, the, <laughs> the, the Wii waggle. But that is not, that's not what gyro control is. Gyro control is you get to where you, just about where you need to go with either the, the trackpad or the analog stick. And then the fine, you just finally adjust and can keep tracking an enemy as they're moving along without having to like, you know, overcome the dead zone that's inherent in every analog stick and and just barely like fine control. That's not there in an analog stick. The using the gyro control is the way to go uh, with this, and I'm very excited that it's part of the Steam Deck. Uh, a big question in uh, that a bunch of people asked was about palm rejection. If you're using the analog stick and you your palm is resting on the the trackpad. Uh, Linus answered that question. He said that it's not ergonomically viable to rest your the meat of your of your thumb on the trackpad while also using the analog control. It, your your hand just naturally arcs, and you're not going to be resting your you know hand on the uh, on the trackpad. So that's actually a big question that got resolved here. Giant Bomb said that the, the device felt like it was built to last, and Valve told them that they weren't anticipating any Joy-Con drift, which is awesome to hear. Tested reported that uh, the touchpads are very similar to what was shipped on the Steam controller, uh, but uh, it's an improved tech over what was shipped with the Steam controller, uh, where the Steam controller was trying to unlock old PC games. Uh, these trackpads give players who don't like first-person shooters with a joystick a choice, and that is critical here. 
Uh, let's talk about thermals next. That makes a lot of sense to talk about thermals after you talk, talk about the controller, because a lot of people, including myself, have been worried about the heat dissipation into the palm, which is a very uncomfortable and just not ideal uh, situation. Uh, as a GPD Win owner, as a GPD Win 2 owner, I have uh, got the sweaty palm syndrome with the GPD Win 2. Uh, not my favorite experience, uh, especially if you put your finger as it wants to naturally rest and it's like right over the uh the grill uh for the exhaust for the heat it, it it's not great so linus and uh pre-c gamer both reported that that you can definitely hear a fan running but it's not super loud um there is quite a bit of heat coming out of the device although linus uh tech Tips was reporting that you know even at its hottest it doesn't get like worryingly hot Linus also had his A and Neo with him, and he said that the A and Neo has a higher pitched whine to it, while uh, it being a similar volume, it has less of a whine to it. Uh, tested, reported that it hadn't gotten hot on the sides where you grip the device, and Linus Tech Tips uh, showed with the thermal camera that it just doesn't, it radiates all the heat up and out through the top of the device rather than radiating into the hands, into the grips. I thought it was interesting that there were Valve employees who were actually very interested in seeing Linus's thermal uh, thermal camera footage uh, in real time. They were looking over his shoulder, and he was explaining where he thought they might add more ventilation <laughs> into the device. And uh, they, they mentioned that their goal was to keep the heat away from the user's hands, and that makes a lot of sense. Load times. Now, this is where things get really, really interesting, because if you watch the Giant Bomb footage, uh, we know for a fact that at least Hades was running off of the SD card. Uh, now, there's no guarantee that every Sw uh, Steam Deck was set up in the same exact way, but I'm going to guess that all of the games were going to be running off the SD card here uh, because uh, Giant Bomb removed the SD card while Hades was playing and the game quit and returned them to the Steam um, user interface. Um, that is very interesting to me because Giant Bomb also did a quick test to see if the switch or the uh, deck loaded Hades faster and the, the Steam Deck smoked Hades. And that's from the SD card. Another interesting to note is that at 18 minutes and 50 seconds, Linus said that he could not tell if the game was being played off the SSD or off the SD card. That is a very interesting thing. And he said, and I quote, it's been fine. That's what he said. That gives me a lot of hope. I, I wasn't one of the skeptics who thought that the SD card would be too uh, slow. I thought it would be fine. And that's what it seems like. Linus himself said it's fine. The loading times were fine. Um, and I'm going to guess that all of the games were still running off the SD card. Um, we'll, we'll see. Uh, that was my guess, though. All right, let's move on to the screen. Not a lot to say here. Um, Linus Tech Tips did show that the uh, the glare was lessened from the screen using the anti-glare etching that uh, is on the premium model of the uh, Steam Deck. Uh, Linus remarked that the color representation looks right to his eye. He did also defend the lower screen resolution for video games playing, and that makes sense because I'd rather have a higher frame rate uh, lower resolution than a higher resolution and a lower frame rate. Um, and that's what this device is going to be built for is lower resolution uh, screen, but higher refresh rate. Linus also tested the click to photon latency uh, against the A and Neo, and he said it was measurably better than the Neo. The deck got 68.6 milliseconds on average, where the Neo got uh, 72 milliseconds on average, plus a better all over grouping and uh, Games Radar said that the screen was nice and clear and an upgrade from the Switch. Um, that's all anybody said about the screen. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about the peripherals now. The peripherals, uh, very interesting stuff here. We have um, Linus pulling out multiple different USB hubs, USB Type-C hubs, and they all worked. Um, Linus tried his own monitor, and it just worked using the USB-C display port out. Uh, he was able to achieve 4K 60 hertz. He also extended from both screens. And Giant Bomb also reported that uh, latency over Bluetooth, game pads over Bluetooth felt fine when using two DualSense controllers. All right, let's talk about SteamOS. 
SteamOS, you can install whatever. A lot of people were fixated on installing Windows on this device. Uh, people were talking about installing whatever you want on this device. I think installing Windows on this device is going to be a mistake, a huge mistake. If you uh, want to see my argument, click here. But uh, Giant Bomb also uh, said that you can, this is dummy friendly. It didn't have any bl uh, blue screens of death. Nothing was crashing. Uh, they were talking with the developers about optimizing future games for the Steam Deck. Um, that all makes perfect sense to me. Uh, I was actually quite impressed with Tested, uh, with Norm's questions from Tested. Uh, he said, if you wanted to install Windows, uh, would you have the Steam Deck interface? And the Valve employee replied, you would just have a Windows interface. And then a few moments later, he said, and this interface, we do eventually want to replace big picture mode with this UI. Um, and we haven't come up with a name for it yet. I'm calling it Deck OS or Deck UI. Tested, asking more good questions. Drivers and updates. Uh, what What is going to happen with the system updates? What's going to happen with Steam Client updates? He was told the system, Steam Client, and BIOS updates are done together and updated as one. That is exactly what I wanted to hear. I did not want to hear uh, Steam Client updates are handled by the, by the Steam Client updater and then the system updates are handled by the package manager. I wanted to hear that it was all done atomically um, or at least handled unified in one coherent way. That is what I wanted to hear. And that makes me very happy. The Valve employees then said, the benefits of doing the hardware and the software is we know exactly what this thing needs. So a customer never has to have the experience of looking for drivers, which then prompted Norm to ask, what about Windows AMD drivers for the APU? And uh, after a lot of stuttering, Norm suggested, is that to be determined? And then the Valve employee said, when we install Windows on this thing, it just works. Which leads me to believe that there aren't Windows drivers for this yet. Um, and I don't, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I want to hear what you think. Let me know down in the comments. Norm asked about uh, installing Windows and how that would work. And uh, the Valve employee said, you can reformat the drive and install whatever. Uh, you can dual boot. And then there, it takes a hot button combination to access the BIOS on this device. Okay, fascinating stuff. Now let's talk about performance because this is what is like really going to make or break this thing. So Linus Tech Tips did uh, Doom Eternal on the Steam Deck versus the Aya Neo. And the deck averaged 58 frames per second and the Neo 37 frames per second. Now that can't be attributed to anything other than um, the fact that the Neo is running Vega uh, GPU and uh, the deck is running RDNA. Uh, after a few moments, though, uh, it looked like Linus had actually got the, the tweak to the device to be running a little faster. And that's when, uh, you know, if you look at the top corner of the screen, it looks like it's running at about 60 or 75 frames a second. Uh, so that's actually really impressive. Now, the fact is Linus turned off the uh, dynamic resolution sizing um, so that he could get these actual real world performance numbers. But with the dynamic resolution on, you're actually going to probably get more frames per second and a stable, a more stable frame rate. Uh, Giant Bomb is quoted as saying everything ran well, Doom Eternal ran best and control was the worst using the default settings. Um, but with control, you could adjust the settings and tweak them to work just fine. Uh, and that's one of the benefits of being a PC here. Uh, this is a consoleized PC. And so you're, you're going to be running PC software with the, uh, with access to the settings menu and being able to tweak it to get it to run exactly how you want. Giant Bomb reported that after about an hour and a half of playing, uh, games, uh, they got about 30% battery, uh, left. Uh, by the time they were done playing. Tested reported that the TDP didn't change between AC and battery power. That's important. Tested also uh, asked about a performance drop between Windows and the Linux emulation, <laughs> which I just thought was adorable. And he was told no performance drop. Uh, we've seen really great results running through Proton. And finally, Norm asked about um, an overclock. And at this point, the Valve employee was not sure about overclocking. Now, there are a few small things that I did want to remark about. Valve are planning on sending uh, these devices to developers uh, primarily, and this is a quote, primarily 
Uh, it is so developers can get an idea of how their game is going to run on this thing. Uh, Valve also handled almost all of the design work except for the uh, CPU um, in-house, which is very interesting. That's another tested report. We saw multiple outlets using this as a computer, and everyone seemed quite impressed with it running as a computer as well. And the thing that I thought was the most interesting was Linus Tech Tips talking about bookmarks. Uh, is this going to be progressive web apps in Steam? And are they moving away from KHTML or WebKit? I would be very interested to see where the browser goes in Steam. Um, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts about that. Uh, the bookmarks thing, oh my gosh. Like, being able to, like, bookmark a web page, install it in Steam as an app, more or less. And, uh... Yeah, that's super cool. Being able to get, you know, install Netflix if you're so inclined to install Netflix and use the web browser using the touch screen, using the, you know, controls. Mm, I'm a web browser nerd. <laughs> But that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, I think uh, that's pretty much everything that we learned. There are some really cool little tidbits in here. Uh, answered a few questions, raised a few more. Uh, I would love to know what you guys think about the coverage of the Steam Deck hands-on that just came out. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about the Steam Deck. I can't even tell you guys. Uh, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help support the show, you can become a patron over on Patreon uh, or you can become a channel member here on YouTube. Um, no matter what you do, though, it's greatly appreciated if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.